Hi there, welcome to Nappy Invest. Another September quarter Penix 4C video today, and we've already seen quite a few companies release their quarterly report, but uh, the amount of companies that have done that is going to be minuscule to the amount of companies that will release their quarterly report in the next week, the last week of trading for October, because any company that is required to release an Appendix 4C or 5B need to release that before the start of trading on the 1st of November or whatever the first day of trading is in November. Many companies that have already released their quarterly report um, have released a fairly good quarterly results, including the company I'll be looking at in this video, mydeal.com.au. The question whether my deal is the next Kogan, of course, is open up to debate. I'm not saying they are, but I did a comparison between my deal uh, right now and Kogan back in the middle of 2017, and there are a lot of similarities between the two companies. And over the past four years, Kogan has simply increased in regards to sales, gross sales, customers. Um, market cap and share price have all increased as well. So there is potential that we'll see the same thing with my deal over the next four years. Now, I'm not saying that my deal will have the same growth trajectory that Kogan did have uh, from 2017 to 2021, just that there is that potential. MyDeal.com.au is an online retail marketplace. And I did a little bit of research on how large my deal is compared to their competitors globally and in Australia. And there are a fair few players out there in this space. And in fact, uh, in March 2021, mydeal.com.au was the 120th largest online marketplace in the world. And in Australia, it was the third largest. And that's excluding the global marketplaces like Amazon. And that was based off visits per month. My Deal was founded in 2012 and it listed on the ASX uh, on the 22nd of October 2020. So it's just had its one year anniversary on the ASX. The CEO, uh, CEO and sole founder is a guy called Sean. I won't try to pronounce his last name because I'm going to completely fail. And he has 49% uh, stake in mydeal.com.au. So definite skin in the game in regards to this company. The market cap of my deal at 80 cents is 206 million. And the ticker code for this company is MYD. MyDeal.com.au is growing at a pretty quick rate. And just to have a look at the financial year 21 numbers compared to the financial year 20 numbers confirms that this company is growing quickly. Revenue has grown from 15.3 million to 38.3 million. That's uh, more than a doubling in revenue. And even though Operating cash flow and net profit have gone backwards. More than likely, the company is spending to grow for the future. Gross sales have more than doubled from 103 million to 218 million, and active customers have almost doubled from 488,000 to 894,000. One of the very intriguing things that I do have in regards to mydeal.com.au is the fact they have. $42.7 million of cash on hand at the end of the financial year 21 and no debt. So even though the market cap is about $206 million, uh, the enterprise value is almost $150 million. And the price to sales ratio is a not too high 5.4. Now let's have a look at the June and September quarter uh, pennies 4Cs, looking at the cash flow statements. Typically for these type of companies, the March and June quarters tend to be the worst quarters. And then as we step into the September quarter and definitely into the December quarter, those quarters tend to be very good. So will we see the same for mydeal.com.au? For the June quarter, receipts to customers, almost 50 million, just shy of that number. And they were operating cash flow negative by 1.4 million. But if you take away the increase in balance of inventory, which was 1.7 million, my deal was almost cash flow neutral. They did have $45 million of cash on hand at the start of the quarter, and that fell to $42.7 million, but still a lot of cash on hand and no debt. And that is one of the attractive things about this company. And indeed, as we move on to the September quarter, our business has grown 50%. In fact, our receipts have grown from $49 million to $74 million because we have seen receipts grow by a significant amount. A lot of that has gone down to the bottom line 
and my deal was our operational cash flow positive for the month by $5.5 million. And there is potential we're going to see even better numbers in the December quarter unless something really bad happens with the economy. And because they were operational cash flow positive by a fair amount, a lot of that has gone down to the bottom line, to the cash, and we have seen the cash grown from $42.7 million to $47.2 million. One of the reasons I have taken a position in this company, and for full disclosure purposes, I am a shareholder of my deal, is simply I like they have $47.2 million of cash because um, that means there's a lot of flexibility with how management deal with that cash on hand. And probably the best thing they can do is acquisitions. And if they do acquisitions, they don't have to do capital raisings. They don't have to borrow. They have all this cash on hand to pay for those acquisitions. That's why I love companies being net cash and why I like companies being operational cash flow positive because they don't have to do capital raisings and they don't have to borrow money from financial institutions. Usually now I show you the receipts history for a company, but because only I only have four quarters of history for my deal, I instead decided to show you the gross sales history that the company did provide in their quarterly report. And the main thing here is I want to see gross sales increasing through time. And if you do have a look at this, quarter two, financial year 21, which is the December quarter of last year, was really high. And then we saw it decrease in the next two quarters. And that just shows you that the December quarter for these type of companies tend to be the best quarters. And more than likely, we'll see gross sales increase in the next quarter. Uh, and because it was approaching, was it $80 million? There is potential we might see gross sales above $100 million in the December quarter. They also have third party brand gross sales and private label gross sales. And right now, private label gross sales, which probably has significantly higher margins than the marketplace gross sales, are increasing. That's another attractive thing about mydeal.com is that private labels are growing. And I want that to grow as quick as possible because of the high margins. One slight negative thing about uh, the active customers, and this is taken again from their quarterly report, we have seen a bit of a slowdown over the past few quarters. We saw massive growth in the active customers right around the time the pandemic began, and that makes sense. A lot of people reverted to online spending, but that growth has slowed over the past three quarters. So that's one concerning thing I do have with the active customers uh, right now, or the overall business right now. And when I, when I compare my deal to Kogan from four years ago, we did see a massive growth in active customers for Kogan um, between 2017 and 2018. And I do doubt we'll see that sort of growth for my deal over the next one year. And yes, I did compare or have done a comparison between Kogan and my deal, a comparison right now for both businesses. And then I looked at Kogan in June 2017, so the end of the financial year of that year, and just compared it to where we are right now with my deal. Because it is unfair to compare Kogan and my deal right now, because Kogan is the significantly larger company. For instance, it has $330 million of gross sales, $4.1 million of customers. Now, this includes an acquisition that Kogan did make, and the market cap of Kogan is $1.2 billion. So about six times larger than my deal. Uh, most of these metrics, uh, gross sales and customers around five times as large. The market cap is about six times. But if we go back four years and look at where Kogan was in the middle of 2017 or the end of that financial year, uh, all these metrics are fairly similar to where my deal is right now. Gross sales almost identical, 70 million for my deal, 80 million or around 80 million for Kogan. Customers almost identical, 929,000 for my deal and 955,000 for Kogan. And the market cap for Kogan was a little bit lower uh, in June 2017 than my deal is right now. In fact, if I remember back to 2017 when I was um, a fairly bullish shareholder of Kogan, I thought that was the one of the most, most obvious buys there was around that time. And over the next year, the market cap for Kogan grew from 156 million to well over 600 million. It quadrupled in share price and market cap over a one year period. I'm not saying that's gonna happen with my deal because we did see significant growth um, in one year for Kogan. For instance, customers grew from 955,000 to 1.4 million 
and gross sales increased from 80 million to 120 million. So that was a 50% growth in both customers and gross sales in one year period. I do doubt my deal can see that sort of growth numbers in the next year. And that's why I do think comparing um, my deal to Kogan and looking at Kogan's growth in terms of market cap over the one year period, I think it is a little bit unfair for my deal. And I don't think we'll, we'll see that, but I do think there is potential for some good growth over the next few years for my deal, because without doubt, this company will grow quite a lot over the next five years. Now on to the daily chart for my deal, which is almost a one year chart. In fact, it's probably exactly one year chart because they listed, what was it about October 22 or something like that. And I'm recording this video on October the 23rd, uh, which is a Saturday. Um, not probably the best looking chart for a period of time between when they IPO'd uh, and about uh, May, June of this year because the share price fell from a high of $2.20 to a low of about 50 cents. And one of the reasons I did buy into this company is because I think as that sentiment really became negative, the share price really took a massive hit um, during the first half of 2021. I think the market completely overreacted and the valuation of this company got down to ridiculously low levels. But since the low in the share price, around the beginning of June at 50 cents, we have seen the share price move of my deal move into an uptrend. And you can see this with this channels, two sloping lines, and that is, well, my deal's share price is trading within that channel right now. It is trending towards the bottom of that channel. If we do see the share price get towards 74 or 75 cents, and that could be a good time for me to top up my shareholdings in this company. That is all I have for this September quarter Pennings 4C video focusing on mydeal.com.au. Is this company the next Kogan? I'd like to hear your thoughts on that question. I do have my doubts whether the my deal can see the same sort of growth trajectory that Kogan did experience for a period of time about three or four years ago. But I do think there is that potential. We'll see some good growth in this company over the next five years. They're in the right space, but it is quite competitive, the online marketplace. So if you do have any questions, any thoughts or opinions, leave them in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial um, expert, financial planner, financial advisor, any of those things. And if you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.